Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Uh, I am delighted to participate in what is now, has now become the annual debate on Baby Loss Awareness Week. Although, sadly, the only reason why we feel that such a debate, such a week of remembrance, is necessary is to mark the 3,500 babies stillborn each year across the United Kingdom and one in three of these stillbirths occurring at full term. And that, of course, does not take into account those babies who die within a year of birth. All the experts agree, including Professor Jim Thornton, Professor of Obstetrics and Gynaecology at the University, University of Nottingham, that, quote, for an otherwise healthy baby to die undelivered near term is, with hindsight, an easily avoidable event. Research to make it avoidable in practice is a priority. And that's why debates like this and any and all measures to highlight stillbirth are of vital importance. Although the UK stillbirth rate has fallen slightly in recent years, it still remains unacceptably, it still remains stubbornly high. For too long this taboo was left in the shadows, too difficult, too upsetting to talk about. And as politicians, we all know what is not discussed what is not acknowledged is not addressed. And if not addressed, it cannot be improved. We in this House have been and will continue to work to break that deafening silence. That's our duty on behalf of all of those trapped in the isolating silence of grief. And some of us in this chamber today, Mr Deputy Speaker, have experienced that silence firsthand. When I think back to the 9th of June 2016, when I had a Westminster Hall debate on stillbirth, it was hugely emotional, not just because of my own experience, but because of the realisation that so many of our babies have been lost over generations, with parents isolated in grief, since this isn't something that was ever talked about in our society, except in whispers. But since 2016, we have come quite a way. And I know that the APPG on baby loss has done so much to ensure that this issue stays firmly on the agenda. And gradually, as a society, people are starting to, are willing to acknowledge this awful event that affects 3,500 plus babies every year in the United Kingdom, with all the devastation, grief and fallout this inevitably brings. I've been in contact with SAD since 2016 with a number of stillbirth organisations like SANS and Safer Births UK, in fact, too many to mention. But early on, I became convinced that if we accept the analysis of the experts like Professor Jim Thornton and others, that an otherwise healthy baby to die undelivered near term is, with hindsight, an easily avoidable event, and why wouldn't we accept what the experts tell us? If we accept that, then surely it makes sense to have full investigations when otherwise healthy babies do die undelivered near term. One third of babies across the United Kingdom who are stillborn die at the end of pregnancy, one in three. That is something that requires serious attention. And that's why last year I asked both the Secretary of State for Health and the United Kingdom Government and the Cabinet Secretary for Health in Scotland, Shona Robeson, MSP, to instigate coroner inquests in England and fatal accident inquiries in Scotland, respectively, when stillbirths at full term occurred in an otherwise healthy baby. Now, I appreciate such processes are expensive, complicated and difficult, but if we consider the lessons that could be learned, what has been missed, what was overlooked, what could have prevented the loss of a baby so close to birth, then this can inform good practice and improve the care for future babies. Logically, gradually, over time, the need for the inquests or fatal accident inquiries would surely diminish as fewer babies would be lost. And of course, you wouldn't just want to be preventing the, the, the loss of babies late in pregnancy. The lessons learned would inform practice and improve it across the whole maternity service at any and every stage of pregnancy. When I lobbied for this, I was told by some that it was simply not doable. I should spend my efforts improving practice in other areas, in other areas of maternity care. Surely it would be best, for example, to focus on ensuring minimum and consistent standards of care across the board. Well, yes and no. The minimum and consistent standards of care that everybody in this chamber, in this parliament seeks, should be embedded in improvement and research 
and the use of coroner inquiries and fatal accident inquiries could be a hugely important part of that. It is not an either-or question. I am hugely heartened that after an initial refusal, the Cabinet Secretary for Health in Scotland, Shona Robeson, has agreed that the Crown Office in Scotland should investigate whether there could be fatal accident inquiries for babies lost late in pregnancy. Such a move is not about bringing prosecutions, but about learning lessons, informing practice and making sure when our children are about to be born but something goes wrong, we find out why and use that knowledge to make other babies safer. Make no mistake, this is a monumentally significant step forward, I have to say largely ignored by the mainstream media, don't know why. But it means that so many who would be comforted by this may not even know that it's, been, it's happened. However, the significance of this development cannot be overstated. If, after consideration, the Crown Office in Scotland decides for whatever reason this cannot be done, then at least we know where we are, we know what obstacles we're dealing with, and we can set about removing them. And I'm convinced this measure will mean fewer of our babies die. And when that is shown to be the case, I am hugely optimistic that a similar measure will be adopted in England. That, I feel, has been a huge step forward in the 16 months since my first debate on stillbirth, and credit must go to the campaigners who have worked so hard to achieve this. This coming Sunday, the 15th of October, is Pregnancy and Infant Loss Remembrance Day, and also would have been my wee boy's eighth birthday. And it's very important that his death and the death of all the babies who have been lost have not been in vain. The campaign goes on so that other babies don't have their lives ended before they even begin. No parent. I will indeed. I thank my honourable friend for giving way, who's uh, giving an excellent speech, very emotive and uh, extremely important in terms of the message that she's conveying about the inquiries. Does she also agree with me that it's extremely important that early miscarriage is well researched? Um, because often when that happens, and I know from my own experience um, of early miscarriage, people will say, oh, it's just natural, there's nothing can be done. But the more we look into it and research the causes, the more we can also prevent that grief. Absolutely, I agree with I agree with my honourable friend, and I think the research at the end of pregnancy can obviously be worked back the way. I think if we start at the end and work back the way, we will spot things much earlier in pregnancy as we learn the lessons that were missed at the end of pregnancy. But no parent, no parent should have to bury their child and not know or understand why they did not live. And that's what drives me on, and I know it's what drives on so many of us in this debate today. The tragedy of the loss of so many of our babies is that it doesn't have to be this way. To change that, in the words of Professor Jim Thornton, must be our priority. Yeah. 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 Will Quince.